Hello everyone, I am João Santos and I will be presenting simplifying multilingual news clustering through projection from a shared space. So for starters, uh, what is news clustering? News clustering is the task of organizing news documents and articles so in the clusters of news in order to compose a story. Why should we care about it? Following emergent news stories in real time is often crucial to make decisions, for example, of the political or economic kind. To give a more specific example, a company may be interested in keeping track of news related to their market competitors. Um, the task of uh, following news stories is very difficult to perform manually, given the sheer amount of news sources and possible languages that the news may be published in. And so there has been a growing demand for systems capable of automatically organizing articles into news stories. Previous approaches for this problem date back to the year 1998 with the DARPA sponsored uh, topic detection and, tra and tracking task. News clustering can be divided into two categories, batch clustering and online clustering. I'll give a quick overview of uh, each of these works. So uh, starting off with, uh, with news lens, uh, news lens constructs its stories by uh, extracting keywords from each article in the news batch and then linking the articles through a community detection algorithm. Uh, then Staikovsky et al. Uh, follows Newsland's work by uh, implementing both uh, sparse approach uh, through TF and EF uh, bag of words, and as well as um, doc to vect uh, this representation approach. Uh, finally, uh, regarding batch clustering approaches, Linger et al. Uh, follows Newsland's um, follows Newsland's and uh, Staikovsky's work by. Uh, uh, implementing a cross-lingual setting uh, that processes batches of articles into monolingual topics and using a fine-tuned dist lingual distilled part to link topics across languages. Regarding uh, systems uh, based on online clustering, uh, Miranda Aralia first approached the task by processing documents into monolingual and cross-lingual clusters, where each document is first associated um, to a monolingual cluster through sparse features, uh, and cross-lingual clusters are then computed uh, by linking uh, different monolingual clusters uh, through cross-lingual word embeddings. Uh, and in the last, Saravana Kumar uh, Eralia uh, uses both sparse and vast features, but focuses on using a fine-tuned entity-aware uh, BERT model to produce desk, desk document representations. Uh, and they evaluate their model uh, specifically for English, not for uh, multilingual languages. Uh, so to make a brief balance of the previous methods, most of them only evaluate for English. Uh, and the multilingual systems, uh, so Miranda's and the Matthews Wingers, uh, are both heavily dependent on language specific features such as the entities of a given document. Uh, and those approaches perform poorly in a multilingual scenario and are hard to extend to other resource languages. Uh, which brings us to our proposal uh, that, is, uh, uh, that we uh, state as thus. Uh, we propose a system that uh, is able to cluster news uh, across languages for which there are uh, pretend multilingual contextual embeddings while maintaining performance for multilingual scenarios. Uh, regarding our contributions, they are more specifically uh, the development of a system that is able to cluster documents without uh, depending on uh, language specific features. Uh, we showed that the use of, con of multilingual contextual embeddings as the main representation improves quest clustering quality. We propose a method to uh, train a classifier for uh, merging similar clusters in an online setting, and we show its importance in obtaining state-of-the-art results for, for multilingual clusters. Uh, and finally, we show that our system performs well on language not seen during training. And we report results for zero-shot news clustering in Chinese, Russian, French, Italian, uh, Slovenian, and Croatian. Uh, moving on to the clustering algorithm. Our main focus here was to depend as little as possible in language-specific features to process news articles for zero-shot languages without having considerable loss. Uh, our system is composed by uh, four main steps, uh, which are obtaining the document representations, uh, computing the best cluster for a given document, uh, to decide 
if the document accepts the best rank cluster and enters it, or if it does not and creates a new cluster with that document alone, and to merge clusters that pertain to the same story. We will see each of these steps in detail, but before that, let's go into a bit over the document representations. So while previous approaches were bound to the specification of the language for each document due to their model limitations, uh, in our case, we use a representation for each document that does not depend on the language, which means we do not need to make extra steps like having monolingual and cross representations and separate tools. Um, and documents are uh, composed by two kinds of representations. So there is a set of dense factors, DR, that correspond to a contextual representation of the document and the temporal representation, DTIS, uh, which is uh, exhibited here. Uh, and for each document, DR contains three uh, dense representations, which are the body plus the title, the first paragraph, and the title uh, plus the first paragraph. To obtain these, uh, these dense vectors, we use this to use, which is the model available in the Honeyface library uh, that aligns text at the sentence level into a shared semantic space. So similar sentences in different languages will be uh, closely mapped in the vector space. This model supports over 50 languages and it does not require the specification of the input language. Um, and for the re temporal representation, we follow previous work and use the temporal representation of a document as its timestamp at the level of the day. When we compare a document's timestamp against a given cluster's timestamp, we compute the Gaussian similarity between the two timestamps. Uh, speaking of clusters, uh, regarding their representation, clusters are also divided into contextual and temporal representations, with each cluster keeping three centroids for each document representation corresponding to, to the average of the acceptance of the accepted document's representation. <coughs> Each cluster also maintains three timestamps for the temporal representation, which are in this case, the mean timestamp for all of the documents, the timestamp for the newest document in the cluster, and the timestamp of the oldest document of the cluster. So before we go into depth regarding the next steps, let's just do a quick overview of the clustering process. So take the following example where we already have here three clusters, which are C1, C2, and C3, uh, and each with their own documents. And a new document enters the stream, which is this uh, document T9 here. So uh, in this case, in our clustering pipeline, this document will first obtain its contextual representations from the, the still used model, and then it will rank its similarity to the clusters in the cluster pool. In this case, it compares itself to C1, C2, and C3, and it determines that C2 is the cluster most likely to be a good fit for this document. As such, we uh, proceed to the acceptance step, where the acceptance model evaluates both the document D9 and the candidate C2. Uh, and from here, two outcomes can take place. Either the document is accepted into the cluster and joins it, or it is not accepted and uh, creates a new cluster, which we call here C4. And finally, we perform the merge step, where clusters that have uh, undergone changes are rated against other clusters to verify if there are any clusters similar enough to merge. So suppose that D9 joined the cluster C2 and it was, uh, it was accepted, and that the influence of, C of D9 on C2 centroids moved C C2 closer to C1 in the vector space, as we see here in the, in the third part of this uh, scheme. Um, then if they were similar enough, C1 and C2 would merge into a single cluster with C1's documents uh, joining C2, making it a larger cluster, as displayed in the, in the last step. So let's see each of these steps in detail. Uh, for the ranking model, after computing its representations, we compare a document D against its cl each cluster C in the cluster pool. So to determine the similarity between the document and each cluster, we compute the ranking score for that cluster. And for that, we use a ranking model that takes the form of a rank SVM uh, model, and we use uh, a news data set to learn the SVM weights. The ranking score for a cluster C, given a document D and the ranking model's um, SVM weights, 
uh, is represented by a score rank function, uh, which uh, is essentially a, it corresponds to an ensemble from uh, uh, from partial, parcels for, from both the document and the cluster. In this case, the blue connections uh, represent uh, each of the cosine similarity computations between the document and the cluster representations uh, weighed against their respective SVM weights. So in this case, we are comparing each matching representation, so the body body and the title of the document against the body and the title of the cluster centroid. Uh, same thing for the first paragraph and first paragraph was the title. Uh, and we also compare the, these two representations against the, the body both title centroid of the cluster. On the other side, the green connections represent the Gaussian similarity pertaining to the temporal features where the document's timestamp is compared against each of the cluster's timestamps. Uh, for the acceptance model, we learn the weights and bias of linear SVM, uh, while uh, with the goal of uh, determining if a given document should join a cluster or not. After the best rank cluster C for the document B has been determined, the acceptance model determines if the document enters the cluster by computing the acceptance score. So the scheme here is very similar to what we saw in the ranking model, but it uses the bias of the linear SVM and also uses different obtained weights. While the goal of the previous task was to rank the clusters, uh, here we are verifying if the acceptance score is greater than zero or not. Uh, if it is, then the document is accepted and enters the uh, candidate cluster. Otherwise, it creates a new cluster. And finally, the last step is the merge model. So after the document has been accepted in the cluster, we take the initial candidate clusters from the ranking process and reevaluate them against the changed cluster pairwise through another SVM model that we call the cluster merge model. And the documents from each cluster with a positive merge decision are inserted into the, cluster, uh, into the source cluster as happened with C2 in our example. Uh, the intuition behind this is to find clusters that started off distant but grew similar enough with time to pretend to the same story and then merge them. Uh, this can happen throughout the clustering process, especially in the beginning, where there are very few documents in the system and the acceptance model may mistakenly assign separate clusters to documents that should be together. Then, as those clusters grow, they can end up in similar points of the vector space, which means that they should be merged. Uh, and for this model, we adapt the scheme from the acceptance model by introducing two changes. Uh, so instead of evaluating the document and the cluster, we evaluate two clusters at a time. And we have two additional features corresponding to the size of each evaluated cluster, uh, which allows the model to distinguish small clusters from big clusters. Uh, moving on to the experiments. Uh, and starting off with the data set, we follow previous work on this task and evaluate our system on a new clustering data set proposed by Rupi Nicaragua. Uh, this, this data set co contains mostly documents in English, Spanish, and German, but also a significant amount of uh, documents in other languages. So in this case, Chinese, Russian, Slovenian, Croatian, French, and Italian. This data set is composed by around 34,000 uh, uh, articles and uh, is divided into a training set of around 20,000 samples and then a test set of about 14,000 samples. Uh, and the training set and the test sets are in different time ranges, which guarantees that the new stories are gu guaranteed different between the sets. Regarding evaluation metrics, we report the F1 score and the cubed F1, as well as their respective precision and recall. Regarding our results or the monolingual clustering task, our system is on par with Miranda Eralia on both English and German, but is surpassed by Winger Eralia on basically all metrics with the exception of standard F1 for German, where we have the best result. Our cluster distribution roughly matches the other systems with English having a greater cluster generation, which indicates sparsity of the documents. Uh, regarding the cross-lingual clustering task, we achieve state-of-the-art performance with an F1 score of 97.21 and a big cubed score of 90.10, which represents an improvement of 10.72 and 8.04 points respectively when compared to the result uh, reported by Linger et al. Uh, additionally, we performed an evaluation study with the goal of studying the influence of each added component for the improvement of the results. We started off with our base model with only a general representation and temporal features, 
which is represented here by the 4F rank process acceptance, implemented the other document rep dense representations. Uh, gave us a gain of over one point on both metrics, which is here on the OTF rank plus acceptance. And the implementation of the merge step gave us our best final report to the results, uh, which is this left line giving us a 90.10 and 97.31 on B cubed and standard F1, respectively. Uh, and finally, we performed a zero shot costing evaluation with the test of uh, data available from group, from group NICS data set. So no data from these documents was seen during training by our models, except for like uh, 10 Chinese documents. And the system managed to achieve F1 scores uh, over 95 points on most languages, with the exception of Croatian and Slovenian, which is a pretty good initial result, considering that we did not learn to cluster documents of those specific languages. Uh, so to conclude this presentation, we presented a costing model that, uh, that produces state-of-the-art results at the multilingual level without depending on features such as the FIDF or entities that depend on the language and that maintains performance at the monolingual level. We demonstrated that it is possible to improve results by utilizing contextual embedding to represent documents at a cross-lingual level and how a linear SVM can be trained to perform such a task. By reducing the complexity of the clustering space, we motivate um, future research on topics such as clustering with user feedback taken into account and high per performance factor space uh, in order to improve clustering speed and scalability. As a final note, the code to reproduce these results uh, will be made available as open source. Thank you for your time.